Hello guys, this is Joseph from Joe Concept. How are you guys doing? I hope everything is fine with you. All right, so I'm sorry I've not been able to upload in the past um, three to four months thereabouts, and it's because I've been I've been on a project which has been taking my time, really time consuming. But I'm back, and I hope to still to still keep uploading as I always do back then. All right, so um, the project I had actually opened my eyes to some things which I feel I want to share with you guys. So it's all about um, the timeline. So that is what the quick tip is going to be about. Some things that I found out to help um, ease and aid my workflow, make them everything fast for me. So I'll just share that. So but before I get into this um, quick tip tutorial, I would like to please implore you guys to um, like this video, share it. You don't know who might need it. And also, if you need um, uh, clarification on anything, you could just put that in the description. If you also have a better way or a new thing that it's regarding this um, topic, you could also put that in the description. I would love to learn from you guys. And also, if you are new to my channel, please do subscribe to this channel because I do tutorials like this every time. So you don't want to miss any tutorials as I drop them. So let's just get into the tutorial. All so the first thing is that normally I would scroll my wheel for me to move um, between frames. But later I realized you could just scroll your wheel here and it goes. So that's just the first thing, even though it doesn't really seem too significant. So I realized that, I noticed that. The other thing I also noticed was um, zooming in and panning in this timeline. So the same way I could zoom, pan in my viewports, I could also do that here in the timeline. So you already know that. If you hold down your Alt key and you press down your middle, sorry, your right hand mouse button and move sideways. You can zoom in, to, if you move to the right, you can zoom in. If you move to the left, you can zoom out. So it's just to get you into the frame so that you can work on each frame in particular. So you have that. Also, if I want to pan, I can also hold down middle mouse. While holding down my alt, middle mouse and drag, I can pan to a particular section, All right? So alt and pan middle mouse to move or pan, alt and right mouse, move or zoom. So once you're done zooming into an area, I can just right click on this um, scroll bar and trim to work areas. If I trim to work area, then I have this section. So why would I want to do that? So let's assume I want to just work on this part of this animation. I don't need to start from the beginning. So I could just trim this place and just play that section so I can see whether the animation is smooth. So if not smooth, I can just quickly work on whatever I want to work on and just be fine. So another thing I also noticed, I also found out that while this animation is playing and you have this timeline selected, you can press escape to pause the um, animation. Also press escape or spacebar rather to play. So if you have worked in this place, can press space bar to play, space bar to even pause, space bar to play, space bar to pause. So far, you've the last thing you click have been on this place. So maybe I click there, click there, then if I hit space bar, it plays space bar. But if you click somewhere outside, it doesn't work, even though you have some, even though your mouse is somewhere here. If you hit space bar, you don't get to have anything. You have to click something within this timeline before it works. Right, so I just I think that's also helpful. So let me take this back to the 90 frames. Then, so from here, I can just right click, expand to full time, and it's going to expand because I've changed this time in here. So the other thing here is selection. So, how do you select um, objects? So I can just click, just left click on any keyframes to select them. Left click on them to select, and that is selection. But if I want to have multiple selection, I will just come to this um, bar. So really, I have a drawing to explain that. If you notice your animation timeline, you have this 
numbering section and you have these um, lines more like a marker so really what that means is this is this, these are the frame numbers and this is the marker so for this technique you need to know where you are clicking on to do a multiple selection if i click on where these numbers are instead of selecting it's going to only scroll scrub in the timeline and that's not what i want i want to select so my mouse has to click in this bar where you have the marker if, it, if i click and drag i'm going to select you notice the difference between this and this i have to click it on these markers that are selected so if you click and drag over a lot you have multiple selection so for me to deselect i'll just hold down shift and click that's what you select. So if you have an object selected, you can also left mouse to move and move this selection. Then another way you can move this without clicking on this is by middle mousing. So even if your mouse is somewhere here, if you hold down your middle mouse and move, you can also move those selection, these selected keys. All right. So you have that. So that is to select. So the next thing I have is um more in the advanced states so if you notice this uh, it took me a long uh, a, a long as in i don't know how to put it took me so much time a long time to know that i actually have um an advanced mode of um representing my keys in the timeline i didn't know about that until this past week i really learned a lot in my animation in the animation i did in this past week so if you right click anywhere here so let me deselect if i right click anywhere here i have the option mode if you go to the option you have the advanced mode so if i click on this adv advanced mode notice what happens my keyframes now become this elongated keyframes and now that means this is advanced mode so now when you get to this elongated keyframes selection is now quite different i cannot do the same thing i did in the standard by clicking here and dragging it will not select it will scrub in the timeline so for me to select multiple either i click on the object you notice i'm even trying to click on the object is not selecting so for me to select either i made a mouse on that object for it to select or i made a mouse i hold down shift and drag so if i hold down shift and left click and drag can have that selection so those are the two ways i found to do that either you made the mouse on a key to do a single selection or you hold down shift and drag to have them selected or you can hold down shift and left mouse hope that works so this doesn't work so so it's really middle mousing or holding down shift and left mouse to drag to do that all right so now so what's now the importance of what is the usefulness of this advanced mode so now once you are in the advanced mode this option comes up for you right now if i don't have this this advanced mode i don't have that option i only have ripple edit this but once as soon as i bring this up i now have these three buttons no split split psr split vector so what do they mean so by default is no split that's why i have this blue bar so what no split does is so by default anytime you hit keyframe in you set a keyframe cinema 4 is going to take all the parameters uh, position information rotation um scale every information it's going to bring them all together and just add them in one go like that as a group that's why you have this blue key but I found out that I can actually split these things to either PSR or vector. So what's the difference between splitting this to PSR? And so let me just show you. If I choose PSR, you notice this changes to this red, green, and blue. If I right click and split vector, changes to red, green, and blue. But notice some things here is different here. Yeah? If I right click, notice the color code I have at this position here this is green if i right click and split psr it changes to red so what does this signify what does it mean so i'm going to go to a new file to explain that so i have this 
if I come to this place, let me quickly do basic animation. So if I come in and hit a keyframe, I have this keyframe working here, then at this position, I'm going to move this here, set a keyframe. Then I have that. So if I to change this to PSR key, you notice I have the red, green, blue. So why do I have this? The reason is because anytime I hit this keyframe icon, record keyframe, it's going to record everything. So it's still taking everything. What if I just want to split the um, keyframes and just I don't need all these, I don't need scales or rotation, I just want this. Then how does it work? So now when you split this to PSR, what Cinema 4D will do is that it's going to record your position, it's going to record your scale and also record your rotation. So now the marker in this case, the red is the position, the green is the scale and the blue is the rotation. So let me show you. If I, from at this position here, I want to record the position, I just move this position here. So instead of me hitting this, I will just keyframe this position. Notice what happens. I now have red. So meaning, since I'm in this split PSR mode, so red has this position recorded. So if I'm, for instance, I want to record the scale at this position, I just record this scale, only these scales. Notice it gives me green. So maybe at this point, I'm putting the scale down to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. I'm recording that. So you notice what I have. So let's say at this position, I want to record the rotation. If I record this rotation, I'm going to have a green, I'm going to have a blue color. Then at this point, I want to rotate this guy somewhere here. So let's just say this way and just record that. So we have that. So you can see how this um, goes. Anytime you hit this, it brings all of them together. But if you now record them separately, I'm going to have those bars, all of them. So this is to show you that, okay, anytime you have this green, so far you know that you are in PSR mode. Anytime you have this, you know that, okay, um, my scale is recorded here. I have only rotation recorded here. So you can always work on the objects here. Okay, so that is, so you have them here. So that is to record the PSR, to split the PSR. You now have another mode to split the vector. So let me quickly show you. Now the vector is more of the X, Y, and Z. Now if I split this, um, for instance, I want to split at this point, I want to split the I, I, sorry, I want to record only the Z position. If I click on this, notice I have red there. If I move the Y position up, let's just say 1000, and I record the Y, you notice what I still have is red. So in my mind, I'm thinking this should just give me a different color coding. But it can't give me because I'm in PSR reset mode. Or split mode so PSR only record all position as one color all rotation as one color and all scales as one color if I want to split them so if in my own case I don't work with um, all this position scale I work with the vector so what I will do is to create a vector so let me just delete all these keyframes that I've created sorry here then bring this to leads. So I will change this to vector. So once I change this to vector, so what that means now is if I come to this position and I record, if I record the Z position, for instance, I'm going to have this blue. So at this point, so let's say I'm going to bring the Z minus 1000 so I have that recorded 
So at the same time, I want to record Y at this position. If I click on Y, you notice I'm going to have the blue and the green, which is the Y and the Z position recorded at the same time. So at 30, I want to bring the Y up to 2000, for instance, and record only Y. You notice at this position, I only have the green. So let's say at this position, I'm going to record the Y and the X because I want to animate the X now. So you notice the X is now re represented here as red. So let's say for this, I'm bringing the S 2000 units towards myself, record that. So you have this, okay? So now the thing with this is that even if I go to scale and record the X of scale, it still sees that as red because it's taking only the vector value, which is the X x y and z so whatever x you pick even if it is scale x it still sees it as red if it is rotate x it sees it as x which is also the same thing as the heading so you know that your pitch is your y rotation and your banking is your z rotation so if i want to record the z rotation now i'll just record the banking and i have that if i want to record the y rotation i know that it is the pitch all right so if i want to record the X, it is the heading. So you have that. So it still sees them. So I just felt I should show you guys this um, technique. I'm still looking at this, um, the, what I can do with this, but it, it is there for us to work on. So I now have one last thing that I want to quickly show you guys. So, and it's here. So I, I can actually can split, remove this so that I can have this. So if you play this now, and I look at this animation set that I'm playing. So if later I, the client now tells me that, oh, Joe, I think this animation is um, kind of slow. I'm looking at if you can sort of reduce this to maybe 60 frames and make the whole animation hit your 60 frames. So how can I do that? All right, how can I do that? Now, it will be, I don't know. Then what I will do is I will now start looking at oh, how to start dragging this animation and bringing this, bringing this, bringing this so that it fits into the 60 frames. But then there is a way you can scale this into 60 frames while you keep the proportion of the spacing of all these things. So you, you know that it's still the same spacing you have and the timing you have that it's still going to... No, the timing will change really, but the spacing for the different keyframes will just... Um, will be kept. The proportion will be kept. That's what I meant to say. So how do you do that? So if you highlight all the keyframes, holding down Shift and highlighting everything, you notice this is your highlight. You have this long bar. Sorry about that. You have this long selection, and you now have this smaller selection by the side. So if I move, if I use this to move this object, it's going to move everything. There. Well, this is what will allow me to scale. So if from here I can, if I click anywhere here, it's only going to move all the keyframe to whatever position I want, all right? So let's say I want to bring this to zero. Then I now want to scale. Then this is what I'm going to use, this knob here. If I use this and drag, it's going to scale all of them and keep the proportion. You can see I can squash them in and out. So it's going to keep the proportions. If I bring this up to 60 that I have here, then if I'm to play this now, you notice the animation should go a lot faster. Okay, can you see that? So, if I want to even make it slower than this, I can all I'm just let's just say 180 for instance. I want to bring this to 180. I will just use this, drag this out until it fits into this. Then it's going to go a lot slower. So that's how you can um scale up or down your animation you can just shrink them or expand them so that you still keep that proportion 
that you have so um i just felt i should show you guys this this is just this is the end of this and if you feel this was helpful please do give me a like and a thumbs up also if you if you are new to my channel please do subscribe because i do tutorials like this every time so i would say do have a wonderful day and god bless you bye i'm looking at this <laughs> Alright, so do have a wonderful day and God bless you. Bye.